Fellas, I've been on the internet for a few days now, and I've noticed something that's trending right now. It's something that a lot of people have been talking about, and I love talking about it myself, and now I have an excuse. You see, I've been around for quite a while. I'm, I, as we've said before, you know, I've got a few years of experience on you guys, and I've lived in a world that none of you could possibly imagine. It's a world of blockbuster video. Now, blockbuster video, for you who weren't around, many of you guys were very young at this time, you don't know what this is. Uh, basically, it's bad Netflix. Honest to God, it is just physical Netflix. You walk into Netflix, you pick a movie, you pay like $9 for it, and then you leave. It sucked, but there were some great things about it. And we're going to talk about some of those things and what it's like to grow up in a blockbuster reality tonight. These are three horrifying tales about blockbuster video, and they're all true. They all happen. They all happen to me. So first off, let's level set. What is blockbuster? Blockbuster, as I said before, is just a storefront where you could buy stuff. It's usually movies. They look like this. You could just walk along any aisle and find tons of movies that you might like and a bunch that you don't. And usually what you would do is you would find like 50 movies, but like three of them had a really funny cover. I remember Killer Clowns from Outer Space always was like, I need to watch that when I'm older. And then I never did. As a kid, as you go down it, you really have no idea what you're looking at. But there were just shelves and shelves and shelves of releases. However, the coolest thing was the video game section. Obviously, right? They got games everywhere, all over the place. And I actually could not find a picture of Blockbuster with a game shelf from when I was a kid. The oldest thing I could find was PS2 and GameCube, seriously. I don't know how. I couldn't find anything of like NES, Genesis, Super Nintendo. I couldn't find anything. It doesn't exist, it's lost media. This is where we're gonna op operate for tonight. I hope you understand, because I can't find anything older. So you've got the movie shelves, you've got the game shelves, and then of course you also have the counter, right? Where you go up, you give the guy your money, and you rent the things. And you can usually rent stuff for like, I don't know, a week? I don't remember the specifics. I never bought it. My mom did. Thanks, mom. So, I've got three stories to tell you about Blockbuster. The first is a normal Blockbuster day, just like any other. It's a nice summer evening. I think it's a Friday. And I'm strolling in like usual. Now, I look older here, but I'm actually eight years old. I'm eight here. I'm a tall eight-year-old. But I'm eight years old, and I walk into the Blockbuster. And there's a lot of buzz going on for a certain games console that's just come out. You may have heard of it. And I look over at the other end of the store, and I see it. A Nintendo 64. This just came out. It was literally this one, by the way. This was literally the display. It has like a little sorry pop shell there, and then it also has like a TV, right? It's amazing. And I see it on the other end of the store. I'm like, holy shit. And what is playing on the N64? But Super Mario. Of course! Their flagship game, Super Mario 64 on the cab. This is heaven for me. This is the coolest thing that's ever happened to me at this point in my life. It is incredible. Now, a little bit of level setting. I need you guys to understand something before we go much further. I grew up on the NES. The NES has two buttons, a D-pad, a start, and a select. And you never use the select button. The select button is there as a joke. All games are simple easy to play, you understand exactly what to do, it's amazing. After the NES came, the Super Nintendo. Well, 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 Nintendo, going a little crazy, aren't we? You got four buttons on the face and two shoulders? Wow, pretty complicated, right? Then they dropped this. I can't tell you what it's like to see this for the first time. It doesn't make sense when you see it for the first time. There are yellow buttons, which are kind of like the face buttons, but there's four of them. Then there's A and B, which is kind of like Nintendo. You've got L and R, and then your finger goes around. And you, oh, Jesus, there's a Z button. And then this vaguely phallic thing in the middle. I'm not touching that. A big red start button and a D-pad over here. And when you see it in the magazine, it's not the same as seeing it in person. It's a little different. So anyway, now that you understand, I'm here. I'm ready to play Super Mario 64 for the first time. I step up to the cab, I'm ready to go, 
I get my hands on the controller, and of course, I'm holding it like this. I'm not touching that. I don't know what it does. Maybe it'll shut down the system. I'm not going to do that. I try to play Super Mario 64 with the D-pad, and I'm pushing the buttons, and nothing is happening. I don't know if you've played Mario 64, but the D-pad doesn't do anything at all. A clear misstep on Nintendo's part. So I start getting frustrated. What the hell is this? I don't know what's going on. I'm starting to get really mad. My mom says, honey, we're about to leave. I'm checking out now. My rage begins to build. The only thing I can do is jump. The big blue button does that. Nothing else happens. I can punch. The buttons seem to do something. But I can't move. I'm just doing this. I haven't seen a single enemy. There's no music. There's a castle in front of me. I can't do anything. Anger gives way to desperation. You have to understand, this is literally where I was. I was outside of the pipe at the very beginning of the game. I can't do anything. I'm stuck. There's nothing I can do. Mom is now leaving the door. She says, honey, we have to go home. It's time to leave. Desperation leads to madness. I've gone crazy. I'm losing my fucking mind. This is all I've wanted for months. I wanted so badly to play this. I followed it in all the magazines. I saw it at E3. I am so angry. I never got to move Super Mario. Nothing ever happened. He did nothing besides jump 80 times and I cried on the car ride home. It was the saddest day of my life. I left with some bullshit N64 game, or sorry, Super Nintendo game that I didn't even want. It was probably some sh I don't know, goof troop. Worst day of my life. Our second story takes place a few years before, actually. And Cody is here perusing the shelves, as you do, going through the store, trying to find the right game to take home and rent. And I can't quite find the right game. There are a lot of games on the shelf. Some of them speak to me, some of them don't. Some of the box arts are okay, but I read that they sucked. But then I see it. Wait. Earthworm Gym 2. Oh my god, they made another one. I couldn't believe it! I loved Earthworm Gym 1. It was one of my favorite games. It was so goofy, and it was fun to play, and it was a little hard. I was entranced. Happiest I've ever been. So, of course, what do I do? I grab it off the shelf, and I slam that bitch on the counter. I say, one, please! And I get ready to take it home for a week of fun and action. And there's one little practice that you guys might not know about that was unique to Blockbuster. You don't really get this anywhere else, and actually you can't do it anymore because of some industry practices, but the best thing in the world to do at this time, once you were bringing a new game home, is read the manual in the car. Good lord, there was nothing more exciting. When you had the game and you could read the manual, read all the stuff that you were about to do, Usually what would happen is we would go to the Blockbuster and then right down the road is the grocery store. And my mom would step in there for cigarettes or milk or whatever we needed, some eggs. And I would just sit in the car and I would read the shit out of that manual. So excited to play whatever I was going to. So we get home and I start playing Earthworm Gym 2. Now this is a revelation of a game, okay? This blew my little mind. I'm on the Genesis. I've never seen anything like this. There's like an action game, and then there's also like a game where like puppies have to cross a thing and, and you have to like bounce them on a marshmallow. And then like there's another part with like falling grandmas where you have to like go up the thing. And there's cows everywhere. It is so goddamn funny. I love this game. A week passes and it's time to return the game. And uh, the game, of course, is still in my Genesis. I never put it anywhere. I had it locked in. However, the manual has somehow disappeared. I don't know where it went. This might not seem like a big deal, but Blockbuster, if you couldn't find any piece of what they gave you, you had to buy the whole game. So this is a $60 mistake. My mom is a single mom trying to make ends meet. I've made a terrible error. 
So I try looking through my room, but my room looks like this? Uh, I don't know where the fuck this is. I start looking around. I can't find it anywhere. I look under these shelves, nothing. I look under this box, nothing. And every time I move something, I just put it somewhere else. And then I have to pick it back up because I forget that I've already looked there. I'm scrambling all over the house. It's 3 p.m. on a, on a, I think it's a Saturday. And I know we have to go return it tonight. My mom, who's working currently, she's working a weekend shift to try to make stuff work. She's about to be home in like an hour or two. I can't find this manual anywhere. Eventually, I give up, and what do I do? Continue playing Earthworm Jim for the Sega Genesis. Because, hey, how can I search if I'm stressed? I need to relax. So I continue playing the game. Until I hear a car pull up in the driveway. Oh, God. I realize how much time I've lost to this game. And the only sensible thing to do at this point is to hide in the closet and hope she doesn't find me. My mom comes home and she says, Honey, are you ready? Because this was our routine. We always went, you know, we took the game back to Blockbuster and then we ran some errands. Honey, where are you? I know she's about to come into the room. I'm not very subtle, right? I don't, I'm not, this is barely big enough for me, this closet. Zach, are you ready to go? I start to lose it. I'm losing my mind because I don't know what I can do. She's going to find me. Why did I think I could escape? She's going to come into my room at some point. There's nowhere for me to go. I come out of the room and I just say, yeah. She says, are you ready to return Earthworm Jim 2? I said, yeah. She said, what's wrong? I said, I can't find the instruction manual. She's mad. She's really mad. Let me be clear. This is not the first time it happened. This is just the first time this was this big of a deal. We looked for another hour and a half. And we could not find it. With my mom. I thought she'd be able to find it. I thought she... You know, adults are supposed to be able to do that shit. We looked for an hour and a half. Never found it. Wasn't in the car. Wasn't in the house. Wasn't in the bathroom. Wasn't in the garage. It was nowhere. And really, there's no... Uh, fulfilling outcome. To this story. There's no satisfying conclusion. We never found that fucking manual. Until a few years later, when we go to move, and that son of a bitch is just sitting there on the floor. Who put the Earthworm Jim 2 manual on the floor? I certainly didn't do it. I still, to this day, have no idea how this thing managed to get back on my floor. You didn't see it for years? I don't know where it came from. It literally just, because I had cleaned my room so many times during that period. Like, you gotta think, like, I was, I was, it was so many years since we moved, and I had cleaned my room thoroughly. I went everywhere. I couldn't find it. And there it was, just staring me right in the face. My mom ended up paying $60, and I didn't get to go to Blockbuster for two months. Parents just don't understand. They truly don't. But I did have a complete copy of Earthworm Jim 2 that I got to keep. Thanks, Mom. Our third and final story involves a little game that I don't know if any of you have heard of. This isn't even a bit. This isn't me about to reveal a popular game. There was a game on the Nintendo 64. It was called Chameleon Twist 2. Chameleon Twist 2 is a sequel to the critically acclaimed game Chameleon Twist 1. Now, as I said before, I was an astute gamer. I was very keen on the latest trends. I read all the magazines. I read EGM. I read Nintendo Power. I read Tips and Tricks. I even read Game Pro. I read all of these magazines. I had subscriptions to each and every one of them. And all of them were in complete agreement. Chameleon Twist 2 is the must-play game of the summer. You absolutely need to play this game. This was 1998, okay? So I think I'm about 10, maybe 9 years old, something like that. But Chameleon Twist 2, 2 is all the rage. People are going nuts in the street for this game. I said, I have to play this. And lucky me, Blockbuster had just unveiled a brand new promotion. There was the Blockbuster Summer Game Pass. 
And dear lord, viewer, if this wasn't the coolest thing I'd ever seen. The Blockbuster Summer Game Pass essentially allowed you to have two games out at any time. Any two games you want. And you would bring the two games back, and you could switch them both out, or you could bring one game in and trade it out. You paid like a flat fee, like 20 bucks a month, and you could come in and out as much as you wanted. It was insane. Of course I jumped on that. I was the most excited I had ever been. I am chuffed to bits to go to my Blockbuster and pick up Chameleon Twist 2. So we drive over to the Blockbuster. I go to the shelves. And what do I see? One game that intrigued my interest. And that's a game known as Pokemon Stadium. I was very excited for this game. Now, I was a big Gen 1-er. I loved Pokemon Red and Blue. I saw it on the shelf. I said, I gotta get that. But remember, I had two games available. And I wanted to play... This was really... This was the appetizer, right? Chameleon Twist 2 is the main course, as I'm sure you'll all agree. That was the game of the summer. So I look around all the shelves. There's no Chameleon Twist 2. It's not on the new releases shelf. It's not on the N64 shelf. It's nowhere at all. I said, Mom, we got to go to another Blockbuster. We drive five miles in the other direction to go to Saverna Park's Blockbuster. They don't have it. We go to Millersville. They don't have it. We go to Crofton. They don't have it. And then we go to the worst place you can go. And if you live in Maryland, you know what this is. We go to Glen fucking Burnie. Glen Burnie is a rat's nest of a city. You only go to Glen Burnie if you want to buy a car or die. Glen Burnie is a disaster. You don't want to go to Glen Burnie. But we went there. We went there because we said, I need to play this game. You had to go so far out of your way to get here. They didn't have it. I even went to Hollywood Video. It sickens me to say this, but there was a Hollywood video a few miles away, and I said, I gotta do something. I went to Hollywood Video. Of course, they didn't have it either, which is crazy because it was such a popular game. I'm totally out of ideas. I said, there's nothing more we can do. Nobody's going to have Chameleon Twist 2. But my mom points out, there's one more blockbuster we haven't hit. Oh, right. The Odenton Blockbuster. The Odenton Blockbuster always looked like this. As you see this, the store closing thing, this isn't like because they went out of business. They just looked like this all the time. The store was perpetually underwater. And I'm like, I guess, Mom. I know they're not going to have it. This store sucks. They don't have anything. We go to the Odenton Blockbuster. I run up to the counter immediately. Give me a copy of Chameleon Twist 2 or go to hell! The worker is taken aback. Whoa, little kid. The hell is your problem? He doesn't realize that I've been out for three hours without ice cream, Rita's, or McDonald's. This is the worst day of my life. He says, let me check. He types on the machine. Ah, <sighs> I'm sorry. We actually don't have a copy of the game. We have one copy, but it was taken out six days ago. Six days ago? That means you're. it's going to come back the day after tomorrow. He's like, yeah, you're not gonna get it. I'm so depressed. I'm the saddest I've ever been. We go to leave the store before we hear a sound ring out across the entire location. <laughs> what was that? Dear viewer, I've neglected to tell you something about Blockbuster. They had a quick drop bin. The quick drop bin was essentially where you would put games that you rented out if you didn't want to go back into the store. You could drop things in there. This young fellow is returning a copy of Super Mario Galaxy, right? And as a seasoned blockbuster goer myself, I said, Oh my god, that could be it. That had happened to me before, where the thing that I wanted came right in. I asked the clerk, can you check out what that was? He said... Sure. He goes to check the drop box. And inside of it, do you know what he found? A copy of 1080 Snowboard. Yeah. And also Chameleon Twist 2! They had the Summer Pass 2! Let's go! Everybody had the Summer Game Pass, and this kid was returning both of his games. 
I rented it out, and I didn't really play it because it got really old after an hour or two. I played much more Pokemon Stadium. But it showed me how much my mom loved me, and it was an absolutely thrilling experience. And those are three horrifyingly true tales about Blockbuster Video. Thank you for watching the movie. Hey, if you enjoyed it, be sure to subscribe. I'm going to do a lot more Storytime videos soon. You guys seem to like the last one. And I have stories for years. And some of them you like, and some of them you might skip. But at least you'll see them, right? Subscribe to the channel. Yeah, my mom rules. Yeah, she's the best. My mom is the best. She's great. Yeah, she's done everything great. Yeah, it's been good.